Now, the planet has seen its fair share of natural and man-made disasters. Often, uh, the first to respond are humanitarian aid workers. The Gift of the Givers has been dealing with the disasters for over 30 years now. It's teamed up with Stellenbosch University Center for Global Surgery uh, to host a two-day conference. It will look at uh, preparedness for humanitarian disasters, and our senior reporter, Desen Tathia, is at that gathering in Cape Town right now. He joins us now. Uh, thank you so much, Desen. Uh, what can you tell us there um, with the Gift of the Givers celebrating 30 years um, in Cape Town? Well, I can tell you that uh, this is a two-day conference and we've only gotten through the first half of the first day and already there's been so much information that has been shared here, information of value that will assist all of the people that operate in this space. And it's not just one particular facet. It's not just search and rescue workers. It's not just doctors. There are a number of people that play their role when the gift of the givers does respond to these disasters, as they have been doing over the past three decades or so. And just uh, a short while ago, before we broke for lunch, that was when there was a detailed discussion on the need for search and rescue during these missions and what that actually entails. And I've got with me now the head of search and rescue at the Gift of the Givers, Mr. Ahmed Bam. Ahmed, thank you for joining me. Something that kept coming up in your discussions was that you can be the best in your field, you can prepare all you want to, and I know that you guys do prepare, but unfortunately, life and the environment has something else in store for when you get there. That's true, Dustin, and thanks for having me. Um, you know, search and rescue, or our response over the 30 years, have showed us that, especially that, you can never plan enough. So as much as we plan, you need to keep on planning, but adaptability in rescues are very, very different. So just take it for example, you go into any country, the infrastructure is damaged, um, there's no basically electricity, the airports might be closed or so. So what you need to do is keep on planning. Once you hit the obstacle, what do you do next? So you need to have that plan B, C, D, E, F up until you go and reach your, and achieve your, your, your goal that you need to achieve. So adaptability is very, very important. And that's what it's taught us as gift of the givers over the years, that, um, you know, if everything is going perfect, something's wrong. Yeah. So we trained now in a way that we are going to encounter obstacles and we just need to adapt and see how we overcome those obstacles. Turkey, for example. I was just going to ask you, Ahmed, like in your time, and you've done a lot of these missions, what for you has been, you're talking about challenges, what for you has been the perfect example of having these severe challenges and then being able to overcome it for the greater good, obviously, to help those that I need? First challenge would be Haiti, I'd always say, because look where Haiti is situated and where we as South Africa were situated. So to get through to Haiti, the airport got closed all of a sudden. Then what you needed to do, divert to, for, um, uh, um, what was the country there? Uh, Dominican Republic, sorry for that. So you had to divert to Dominican Republic. But you don't know anyone in Dominican Republic. So you needed to make sure that NGOs can receive you there. So we had Caritas and CRS that assisted us and from Dominican Republic to get into Haiti as well and to assist. And then when you arrive in Haiti, you're going into a disaster zone, you need to make sure that you have now your base of operations ready, your food, your equipment, where you're going to stay before you can do search and rescue efforts. Turkey, for example, was quite the same. I mean, they sent us through to Hatay. We arrived there. Things were promised in terms of it, but you don't blame them because it affected almost 13 million people, the areas we went to. So you're going into the disaster zone. You need to be prepared in terms of where you're going to stay, how you're going to sustain yourself because you don't want to be become a burden on the country or the area and you come there living a luxury life or want to prepare and have all the best or five-star hotel when the people all around you have lost everything. So adaptability is very important and you need to plan ahead. And over the few years on these missions, we've traveled all over the globe, it's assisted us how to adapt and that's the most important aspect. And that's, I think, an important But I saw some of the, the young people here uh, chatting to you a little while ago. And I think uh, just to share with anyone who may be listening or watching and uh, who might have an interest in this kind of work, what is it that would set them apart? Or what, would it, what is it or what characteristics would they need to be able to assist on the level that the gift of the givers does uh, in these types of situations beyond just having the skills for that job? 
as you mentioned, the skills are very important, so you want the right shoe fit. But with us and the success of Gift of the Givers, especially with the types of volunteers we do take is, you might have all the theory. You might be good at the control environment you're working, but you might not be able to adapt in a disaster zone. That doesn't make you um, any less bad or anything, you know, or, or, or your skills or putting that in repute or something. But sometimes you need to have beyond the type of skills that you've acquired in terms of knowledge. And what's very important with us is you need to have integrity. You need to show empathy. Mm -hmm. You need to learn how to respect all different cultures. You need to be sensitized to things like that. So it goes much more beyond than just the normal skills you have. And that's the important characteristics that makes our teams very successful. You've traveled with us and you've seen whether you're a doctor, whether you're a paramedic, rescue or the media, you all won. There's no hierarchy system. And there's times where you as media as well, you've dropped the camera many times. You adapt and say, what can I do because of the need that needs to arise? I'll say, Dustin, you need to pack tablets. Mm -hmm. You'll do that because you know that's a type of person. But besides what's off camera and what we need to do, empathy, integrity, dignity, that's the most important thing, you know. Thank you so much for your time, Amit Baum there. And I think what's important to take away from that is that it's really not just all of the stuff that you find in textbooks. I think this is, uh, you know, some people are just born to do this kind of work. By the end of this conference, these two days, hopefully there'll be a whole new generation, and a whole group of other people that will also be prepared to assist when they are called upon to do so.